In this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, episode two of Restricted to Ship, Ghosted in Shanghai has dropped. What is it like to be shanghai in a Chinese shipyard? Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglin, welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. You may remember last week, I did an interview with Madeline Walchko, who's the second mate on board an American container liner in a shipyard in Shanghai, China. She had just premiered a episode of a series she was doing entitled Restricted to Ship. Episode one had dropped. Well, episode two is out now. So I want to link you over to that episode. Number one, you can catch first our interview together I did with Madeline right here. And then the links to the episodes are right there also. And they'll be at the end of the video and in the show notes. But I also want to provide a little bit of context to what is going on in the video and highlight some of the issues that they raise in episode two. So before we go any further, if you're new to the channel, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. As they come out, be sure to share it across social media. And if you can, support us via our Patreon. But let's go ahead and go to Madeline's newest episode, episode two, Restricted to Ship. So to give you the backdrop here, uh, this ship went into a shipyard outside of Shanghai, China. We're going to talk about that in a minute, put this in the context. And basically in a date in March, late March, they had about 500 workers on board. I think it was around March 24th. The workers went off the ship at lunchtime and never returned. So you had 500 ship workers who have taken apart good chunks of this vessel and now all of a sudden the vessel can't leave because there are vital components that have been ripped apart. And they, the ship is really on their own to do some of the own repairs to basically maintain themselves with 29 personnel on board, 24 crewmen there and five members from the ship's company who are on board. They're short of food and provisions, uh, trying to get shore power to run part of the elements on board they only have one generator and this story really encapsulates the plight of these 29 american mariners stuck on board this vessel in shanghai during a shutdown due to covid when the chinese implement their shutdown they shut everything down nothing moves you're not allowed on or off people aren't moving through the streets and we're seeing that in the supply chain right now but 25 vessels find themselves stuck in this shipyard island off the coast of Shanghai. So you may ask yourself, wait a minute, if this crew is stuck in Shanghai, they're American citizens, you have to be an American uh, citizen to work on a US flag vessel. This is a US flag vessel, and this is a ship of uh, a container ship that's used in the Trans-Pacific route. And I'll talk a little bit more about its service in a second. But here's a meeting between the crew talking about their current predicament on board, which I think is very interesting to get you guys up to speed with what I know and what's been done, just so you guys are aware. To be honest, we don't 100% know exactly all the situations. I'm pretty sure at this point the world is aware of the lockdown in Shanghai. We're not the only ship here that's stuck. There's 25 other ships that are in the same situation. We don't know when things will end or when we're going to be done. For us, the fastest way out of this situation at this point right now is through it, okay? That's the fastest way for us. We're not regular citizens. We can't just call up the State Department at this point and uh, ask for evac. We've signed articles, and that this is what we're governed by. This is governed and enforced by the United States Coast Guard. See me afterwards with your individual needs, okay? Toiletries, medications. This goes down in the... So that issue right there, that they sign articles. So when mariners sign on board a vessel, especially for an international voyage, you sign shipping articles. And those shipping articles basically are a contract between you and the shipping company. And typically you don't sign on for a set period of time, you sit on for a voyage. And in this case, most of these crew members had signed on for about three, four months, which was been the, the routine time it takes to cycle that vessel across the Pacific through a shipyard and back again. But since the vessel has not come out of the shipyard yet, this is creating the problem with them. And you can't just abandon the vessel because you break your articles, and in which case you can be held liable for that and potentially lose your merchant marine certificate, which is issued through the US Coast Guard. So the crew is stuck on board this vessel and they're having to make do 
with a pretty bad situation on board as, 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 de as depicted here in this video. So since the ship is in the shipyard, most of the elements of the ship, the internal workings have been disassembled, taken apart, and basically left in tatters during a shipyard, which is fairly typical. And so one of the issues here is the amount of rain they've been getting, series of rainstorms. And because a lot of the ship's pumps and, and mechanical issues, and they lack power on board in some areas, you see areas of the cargo hull that are just flooded. And the crew on board has to use these portable pumps that were left by the Chinese to back them up. I'll let Madeline talk about the condition on the ship here in this section of the video. I don't know. I'll go down and unplug it. Fucking ship looks like such a fucking ghetto. So this is second mate Madeline Walchko, who I interviewed uh, the other week, and uh, I, I think she's right. It does look kind of bad on board. Uh, and again, that's typical of all twenty-five ships that are stuck in this Shanghai shipyard right now. They're all facing the same similar situation. Now you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, Sal, why is it that a U.S. ship finds itself in a Chinese shipyard? Well, that's easy for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's groups that are gonna take advantage of the situation and sit there and point fingers at it. So real quick, hello, Cato. Hello, everybody there at the Cato Institute, because I guarantee you there are two guys there, Colin and Scott. Scott, who, by the way, has blocked me on Twitter for no good reason, by the way, Scott. I, I don't know why you would do that. I think that's a really wuss thing to do, in my opinion. But anyway, that's Scott Linscum, by the way. But the reason they're in the shipyard is very simple. This ship operates on the US, Japan, Korea, China route. And because of the lack of shipyards on the West Coast of the United States, because we have not invested in shipyard infrastructure in this country, we haven't been building ships, we don't build commercial ships, uh, there is not enough repair facilities on the West Coast to dry dock these vessels. And because of a commercial ship versus a Navy ship, shipyards on the West Coast much rather have a contract with a Navy vessel than a commercial ship. Commercial ships are not as profitable for them for a shipyard period. They can get a heck of a lot more with a Navy vessel. So from San Diego all the way up to Seattle, Tacoma, it's Navy vessels and government-owned vessels that you will see in most shipyards. Commercial vessels have to go overseas. Now, if you go overseas with a U.S. flag vessel and do shipyard work, you got to pay a 50% ad valorem tax on that. And since you got to pay that 50% ad valorem tax, you go to the cheapest shipyard you can find, and that is China. Why? Because they're state-run and state-subsidized. But understand, what this means is a U.S. vessel is sitting out of service right now in a Chinese shipyard because of a lockdown. And let's talk about that ship's service for a second. Since they mentioned the ship's name and the ship's company in the video, I'll go ahead and say this. So this is the vessel, the motor vessel, President Wilson. She's one of six large container ships operated what's, by what's called APL. It used to be American President's Line. It's no longer American President's Line. It is just APL. It is a subsidiary of a larger international firm called CMA CGM, which is a French company. Uh, they bought out APL. And APL, this is their sheet right here talking about their uh, fleet. They operate nine vessels uh, for the U.S. ranging from 1,700 to 7,800 TEUs. Uh, they're the second largest participant in the maritime security program. This is an incentive program that funds 60 ships to be U.S. flagged. Uh, they employ about 400 mariners, as was mentioned. And their vessels operate on a couple of major routes. And in particularly, their big route is across the Trans-Pacific. And the ships identified as the presidents here, the Cleveland, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Roosevelt, Wilson, and Truman are the main ones. And the ship in particular here is the Wilson, which is a 5,700 TEU vessel. And then those ships, and I think I have it here for it. Yeah, they uh, operate a pretty essential route across. They supply over to Yokohama, to Busan in Korea, to Naha, 
in Okinawa and then stops at Qingdao and Shanghai in China, and they're fed by rail services. This is the only trans-Pacific route that the U.S. military has access to. And the cargo that goes across to Yokohama, to Busan, to Naha, I then transferred to smaller APL vessels that feed out into places like Guam. And what you have is, is a pretty large service here that provides a wealth of transportation needs. And now one of those six ships is taken out of service. Now understand, as the US government, we pay part of that vessel. We pay a basically a $5 million subsidy to keep that vessel US flagged and operate under military control. But because of the lack of infrastructure in the United States, we have to basically ship this vessel out to Shanghai, China to go get the shipyard work done because we lack it. Now, again, there's going to be groups, hello, Kato again, who are going to sit there and say, see, we should, we should get rid of US flag and we should use foreign flag and just let them go overseas. But is that the way you want your US military goods shipped? Is that the way you want to depend on shipping during times of emergency and war. I think the issue here is more, we need to be investing back in infrastructure in the United States, more shipyards, building more ships in the United States, because that gets the cost down lower. Yeah, they're going to come back to you and sit there and talk about how, how expensive US ships are. Yeah, when you build one or two ships, it's going to be expensive. When you start building 10, 20 ships, the cost comes down. Go build an F-150 by yourself in a kit versus buy one off an assembly line that build, makes a thousand of them an hour. Yeah, the price is going to be different. Let's go back to Madeline's video and, and see what else is going on board the vessel. So I sail for three years. And can I be clear that you sail with a unique cast of characters on board a vessel? They're, they're, it's unique, it's just, it is. There, there are some you love, there's some you hate, and, and but there's always a characters on there. And, and I think one of my favorite ones on board the President Wilson right now is, is, is this AB right here. So I'm gonna let him summarize the situation for you. Yeah, I mean, you run out of food and get really hungry, we'll have a cat to eat. My name is Giancarlo Tomei. I'm uh, one of the ABs on board. Uh, let's see, I've been out here about seven months so far. Uh, most of our contracts are only good for uh, three months. Uh, shipyard sucks. Nobody wants to be here. We don't know how long we're going to be here. We're running out of food and Shanghai's a dump and I think everybody's going to miss this place like a herpes outbreak. Okay, can be clear how great that, that clip is? That, that, that to me summarizes their situation perfectly. Uh, again, it, it, it just everything you want in a clip is is right there. I I, I John Carlos. I just I just dude, you you are the man when it comes to summarizing a situation. One of the things about sailing on a ship is really the monotony and and how things can be the same over and over again. Every day is Groundhog Day in some ways, and you get that here from Madeline. Vessel secure port side to lay berth as before. Continue COVID lockdown by Chinese government. Still no shipyard work. We saw about 10 shipyard workers get onto the ship just alongside the other side of the lay berth from us this morning when we were doing stores and the supervisors on board called them and they're like what are you guys doing on that ship not coming to our ship and they're like we are working the costco ships only right now so that is extremely frustrating to hear just real quick costco shipping is the chinese overseas shipping company it is the state-owned shipping company of china so, and by the way, it's one of the biggest container firms out there, third largest in the world, uh, provides roughly around 15% of the world's container traffic out there. So again, you know, and it's also very hard to compete against a state run container line that is operated by a superpower like China, which by the way, doesn't have to make a profit. I mean, if they're gonna be bringing back 10 people at a time to come work on us, with all this fucking shit to deal with, that's gonna be extremely frustrating to see. 
We had close to 500 shipyard workers on board at the beginning of all this. When they started work, they were bringing on hundreds of people to work on this fucking ship. You couldn't even hear yourself think when they were all here. And then if they try to bring back 10 to 20 people to work on us at a time, we're never gonna get out of here. So Madeline, and Madeline's language is typical for Mariners. I'm sorry, that's just the way we talk. Uh, but she's right. I mean, one of the things that you have is even if the workers come back on board tomorrow, it's six weeks until they are able to get that ship back together again and sail. And most of the crew is over there appointed. I think Madeline, in the previous video we did, talked about the fact that by May, everyone will be over contract. Uh, when they're supposed to be relieved. And again, it's just the not, it's the unknowing, it's the waiting right here. And, you know, we're talking a lot about supply chain issues and uh, the crisis kind of looming again on the horizon, but the lockdown in China is creating a massive disruption across the supply chain. If you think about the case of these 25 vessels, they're taken out of service. And not only have they been taken out of service, but they're, 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 Repairs have been delayed. It's actually going to be longer probably because we're going to have to fix things that have broken since then or have been more damaged because of exposure to the elements. And then ships that were supposed to come in the shipyard are not going in the shipyard. And so what we're seeing again is those butterfly effects of lockdowns and shutdowns, particularly in China right now, that's going to resonate across the supply chain. I think this video also does a great job and I recommend you watch the whole video. I just showed you a couple of snippets. Watch the whole video. You'll get the image of what it's like to work on a ship. The intricacies, the details, the amount of, of knowledge you have to have, uh, understanding the piping system, electrical system, the, the pure at, be like a monkey to climb through things. You'll start to understand. And when you look at those holds to go down, up and down those holds that are eight, nine stories, there's no elevators to them. You got to climb up and down. So it is a physical job. And when people sit there and talk about the fact that mariners don't deserve the benefits and money they get, again, look at the job that they have to do. I think Madeline and her crew are doing a great job showcasing this. Again, you know, mariners want to do the job they're assigned to. What they don't like is being thrust into positions they have absolutely no control over. And for mariners, it's a very tough thing. They like having control, but here they don't. So be sure to go check the first episode and second episode. Again, I got them up right here in the links. You can go check them out. Uh, you can watch my interview I had with Madeline too, to talk about the details of the background for this series and some more insight on what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, be sure to go over to Madeline's YouTube page. That's where these premiere on. I'll also have that in the show notes and the link above so that you can go to them. And if you can, please, once again, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it across social media, and support us via our Patreon page. Until our next video, this is Sal, who's fortunately not been Shanghai'd. We'll see you next time.